Here we're going to tie a EP style game changer fly with the new fish skull fish spine shanks. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the smallest uh, little shank here and uh, I am going to add a Daiichi intruder hook to the back end of it. Uh, the issue I've had with uh, the uh, game changer is short strikes. So no more short strikes are allowed. I uh, fix that problem by just attaching a hook at the back instead of a, a tail made out of hackle and I build up a nice thread uh, just a bunch of thread bulk here to close that gap then I can whip finish and what you're going to want to do on each of these sections is you are going to want to super glue these. I just use a little bit of uh, Zappa Gap brush to quickly super glue the uh, threads nice and good there so it doesn't come undone on me. These flies do take a little bit of time to tie so you don't want them to simply just fall apart. Then you're going to let that dry and you're going to work on your uh, next shank here which is going to be the next largest size. And just for time, I'm going to use the same shank here. I'm going to wipe off the super glue. Normally, you would want to uh, let that dry. Wipe it off here so we can get back to tying. We're going to attach our next shank. And I actually want this hook to face up. There we go. Just kind of let it hang back out of the way. Now you're going to have to be very careful that you don't uh, hook yourself when you're tying this fly. It does a good job of hooking the fish, but it also does a good job of hooking your hand if you're not careful. So once you have that next section attached. I'm going to start our thread. And we're going to take a EP streamer brush or a EP shrimp dub brush, either one. Both are very similar. We're going to tie this brush in. I'm going to tie this in a white color. It's also good in olive, black, browns. I have a pair of wire cutters handy to help bite through the core of the streamer brush. And then I'm going to take my thread all the way up to the, the eye of that shank. Now very carefully I'm going to wrap this material. With each wrap I'm going to stroke back the material and uh, be careful, like I said, not to hook yourself. We're just going to build up a body with this material. each wrap right in front of the other. And if you have a brush handy, you can kind of every once in a while tease out any of the fibers that get trapped. Once you get towards the eye, we're going to take this all the way up to the eye. Then we're going to capture it with our thread. And you can wiggle this out to break the wire or get in there tight with your wire cutters. I usually like to wiggle it out by holding the thread tight and then spiraling the brush. And we're just going to capture everything. Then we're going to do a whip finish. And you will also want to super glue this head as well. I'll go ahead and just skip that for time's sake on the video. 
You can trim out your thread. Then real quick before we tie our next shank in, I like to usually brush out as much of the fibers as I can. Be careful again of that stinger hook back there that you don't catch yourself. Alright, now the next shank will be the next longest one. Start our thread, thread that shank on there, and then close the, the gap of the shank. Some nice tight wraps. I usually like to do some initial wraps and wrap onto the bare shank and then wrap back up onto the shank again where the opening is and wrap onto the plain portion of the shank. And then go back up to the opening once more. And that really makes sure that that shank is closed and secure. I usually move the shank to the very tip of the jaw of my vise. Now we're going to take our streamer brush again. And we're just going to repeat the same process on this shank and uh, the shank after that. All right, now that we have our shanks all tied together, we have our stinger hook there at the back. We have one big poof ball right now. Next thing we need to do is attach it to our hook. So the first thing we're gonna do is just take our thread and we are just going to lay down a quick thread base. Make sure everything is nice and secure. Then we're going to take some large Senyo's intruder wire. And we're going to tie this in nice and long. Piece that's about four or five inches. And since we have a stinger hook on the back, I want to make sure that this uh, wire does not get pulled off. So what I'm going to do is just quickly double over the wire. Doubling it over ensures that it will not get uh, pulled through all my thread wraps. And then I'm going to take it all the way back to where the shank begins to bend. And just lay down some nice tight wraps. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our shanks here that we just finished up. And I'm going to go up through the eye of the shank here to attach it to the hook. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down almost tight to the shank. I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop there. That will allow the tail of the fly to wiggle and articulate. Then I'm going to lay down some nice tight wraps all the way back to the bend. And I'll just trim out some of this excess wire real quick with my wire cutters. Once I have everything secure, I left the top a little bit long on purpose. Again, I'm going to double it over. That will keep it from getting pulled out. And then you can trim out the excess intruder wire then we're ready to wrap a body just like we did on the shanks so to do that I'm just going to take my thread all the way back to the back here 
Let's finish cleaning all this up. And we're ready to start again. Still have a little bit left of one of these brushes here, so I'm going to finish that off. Then I'll have to probably tie in a, another one here. I won't take my thread quite all the way forward because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need another one. So all I'm going to do is just continue to wrap a nice dense body with this EP brush. As I get close to the end here, you can uh, brush it real quick before you tie in another one. I like to brush out as many of the trap fibers as much as I can with these brushes. And we can tie in another one. And we'll take our thread all the way to the eye. Once we get all the way up there, we can capture it with our thread. Nice tight wraps. Then you can either spiral it out of there or trim it with your wire cutters. Sometimes you get little fibers trapped. So you just got to get in there with your scissors once the wire breaks. Then you can clean up the head of the fly, trim out any trapped fibers. And you will want to whip finish and of course glue it. Now before you do anything else, you're going to want to give it one last brushing and then you're going to need to trim and uh, how you trim depends on the look that you're going for. Uh, if you want a nice wide bodied fly for pike or bass, you can trim it uh, with a wide profile or for trout, you can do it much slimmer. Uh, it all just depends on the look that you are going for. And what you're going to try to do is when you brush this is you want to try to get all these pieces to blend together if you can. So I'll brush the entire fly and just try to make it look like one long cohesive fly. Once you're happy with the brush, you can start to trim. And I like to use a either a hair scissor or a pedigene a long loop scissor. And you just trim to taste. I like to kind of stand the fibers up and I'll just trim at an angle. I'll zoom out here a little bit for you. See if we can't reposition. 
And I'll just kind of stand everybody up and just trim to your liking. I'm going to trim a little bit at an angle. Leave most of the fibers near the front fairly long. I'm going to do a more of a wide profile kind of trim. And just trim away and be careful not to over trim. Now once you have the fly trimmed to the overall shape that you want, I tied a little bit of a bulkier pattern here uh, for big browns. You can uh, do a couple different things here. You can color it with a marker if you like. You can leave it totally white. Uh, this will actually in the water blend completely together and turn a semi kind of translucent color which is what I'm looking for. Uh, the next thing you will want to do on all of them is you will want to add a pair of eyes and you can use any type of brand that you like. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of clear cure goo eyes here and uh, I'm going to, I like the red eyes and uh, you're just simply going to take some Zappa Gap or some Zappa Goo and you are going to add a little bit of that to your hook or to the side of the fly right where you're going to put your eyes. I like to use a little bit of the thicker glue here and you can take an eye and just add it to the side of the fly then you'll want to press it there very very firmly for 20 to 30 seconds it wasn't quite 20 30 seconds but usually after 10 or 15 it'll hold there pretty good but if you're doing this at home you'll want to really hold it there pinch it there and uh, let it cure and then you can do the same thing to the other side and you want to add the glue to the same exact spot on the other side of the fly that you did on the side we just did. So you have to kind of look and see where you added it. You want to line these eyes up as much as you can. And I simply just take another eye and slide it onto that area. And before I squeeze, I just double check that it's lined up on the front and also on the top. And I lined it up on the front, but on the top I'm a little off, so I just kind of shimmy it into place. And I'm going to squeeze both of them together very, very hard, again, for the 20 seconds or so. And that will really ensure that they stay in place. And some guys will even take uh, clear cure goo and uh, coat the entire head. That will also help keep them in place. And once you have it in place, they didn't quite dry all the way, but I, so I have to be careful. And the, I just don't want to take too long in the video and have you watch glue dry. But you'll want to brush some of the fibers out and around the glue to fill out that head and uh, you essentially have a finished game changer style fly great for bass, pike, trout, basically any predator that swims and you can find all the materials for this fly as well as the new articulated fish spine shanks on our website in the riffle.com if you're watching this via YouTube you can uh, find the link to the recipe information as well as the materials below the video in the description there's a link there that you can follow to our website and that is the EP style game changer